Shalom. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Unto you all I say greetings and shalom. All right. Um, I'm trying to decide the best way to go about this lesson. Honestly, brothers, I'm really going with the spirit on this. I got a few precepts written down. But I pray that you all bear with me and uh, try to listen to this message. At first, I wasn't going to do this lesson. Uh, I was just going to kind of keep it to myself. I was like, maybe I can tell one or two brothers, you know. Um, but the brother that I mentioned this to is a very beloved brother um, that I was speaking to. And he, he told me that he thought I should put it on wax. Um, because it, 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 it could possibly be comforting to the body and to a lot of other brothers. All right, the brother should come in Detroit. Um, he was telling me, like, you know, we, we never, he, you know, he was sending me precepts and things like that, but we never know the position other men are in. And that's the reason why the Lord says, you love me, feed my sheep. Okay. So I, I pray this is edifying. I do want to say before I start this, I'm not doing this video to put myself on any type of level. I'm not doing this to uh, even say anything about myself. It's all for the glory of the Lord and uh, what's in his scriptures and what his word says. And I, I just want brothers to know that that's more valid than anything. And so as I bring this thing, out, I'm going to say a few things about my personal life, you know, but like I said, that's not about myself either, but it's just the spirit is directing me to, to speak on this. You know, and as brothers know, you know, I sometimes I do videos on uh, women, so to speak. And uh, but a lot of times I get vexed with speaking about women. And I, so I have a lot of valid points about the, the good things uh, to come from what women are going to be doing and uh, the, some some bad things, you know. But this is not me to hearken on the woman, so to speak, but it's to predominantly talk about this scripture and the vision that I believe through the spirit and power of by Shemuel Shai. That was delivered unto me. Okay, so first I'm going to read this scripture. Isaiah 4 and 1. It says, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Okay, so that scripture is speaking of the coming days uh, to happen upon those uh the, to the men of the lord okay these this is a prophecy of things to come because modern day babylon america has told you all that you know one man needs to be one woman now of course the new testament uh second chronicle i mean chronicle first chronicles the seventh chapter if i'm not mistaken uh goes in it may be second chronicle uh Salakia, corinthians Second Corinthians, the seventh chapter, or maybe even first Corinthians, the uh, seventh chapter. But it talks about the marriage between a man and a woman. Okay, but it said, you know, you will read, it says, I, 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 every man ought to be with, with his own wife to avoid fornication. But he's speaking that according to um, uh, expediency, but not necessity or not by the commandment of the word. Because the command, the commandment says you can take more than one wife okay and i have some precepts to follow that up all right and matter of fact before i um i'm just going to say isaiah 4 and 1 so we know the seven women does not mean literally the number seven but it's referring to uh the number of completion so brothers may have two wives brothers may have five brothers may have 10 brother may have 20 brother may have 30 in the kingdom brothers may have hundreds of wives okay is because we will literally be able to handle it with our new bodies, with our state of, uh, so to speak, wealth, our level of righteousness, our uh, our new bodies being able to obtain the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Lord sealed in our inward parts. Okay, so seven women shall take hold of one man. But this is not just speaking about the kingdom of heaven. This is going to happen on earth in these latter days okay and it's predominantly in the time of jacob's trouble when these things are going to happen okay and it says uh saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel 
only let us be called by their name to take away our approach. So why would women say that? Okay, because there be, there's going to be very treacherous times coming to America very soon. Whereas women are going to realize that men, men of the Lord are the hiding place from the, the destruction of Esau and our destruction of, from the Heavenly Father ultimately. But let me read this. This is Isaiah 32 and 2. It says, and a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. All right. That wind is ultimately talking about the thermonuclear missiles that are going to come because the people that are going to be delivered up are the elect of the nation of Israel. OK. And then it also says and a covert, which, which is another way of saying a shelter or a hiding place or a secret place, a covert from the tempest as the rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So also in the time of uh, judgment of martial law, which is known as Jacob's trouble in the Bible. When that time comes upon the earth, all right, these women are going to need a shelter from the destruction. It says uh, like rivers of water in a dry place. You know, if you're in the desert, what's the only thing that you're thinking about is water. The only thing that you need for to live and to, to continue on is water. It says, and as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So a great rock is a shadow of protection from the sun. Uh, uh, weary land means you're growing tired, you're growing weak, but a great rock is, can shadow you from the beating of the sun, from the bad things that are, can happen to you, from death itself. Okay? So, uh, before I jump down, I want to read, um, I want to read about another brother, another man, another man in the scriptures who had, uh, multiple, there are, there are many scriptures in the Bible, honestly, that have men with, uh, multiple wives, but I want to get this one. Uh, this is Second Chronicles 13 and 21. It says, But Abijah waxed mighty and married 14 wives and begat 20 and 2 sons and 16 daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written in the story of the prophet Edo. All right, so Abijah okay who was um you know he he was one of the sons of jeroboam if i'm not i'm uh Salakia. one of the sons of um one of the sons of of uh judah or israel i'm not exactly which sure oh uh, over judah right so he was the one of the sons of judah uh when uh, when uh when the tribes were split between Re Rehoboam and jeroboam okay and so he had 14 wives man Okay, so it's not too far fetched to believe that these things are going to be given unto the men of the Lord again. All right, this is all prophesied to happen in the Bible. Okay, and you know, I guess I can just quick mention it. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, let me go to it because you know, King uh, King Solomon, this is first Kings 11 and one through three it says but king solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of pharaoh women of the moabites ammonites edomites zidonians and hittites so he had so-called asians so-called africans so-called japanese you know he had uh different types of women it says of the nations concerning which the lord said unto the children of israel ye shall not go into them neither shall they come into you for surely they would turn away your heart after their gods solomon clave unto these in love so there was no problem with having those different women, but Solomon's problem was Solomon went after their gods. And that's why the Lord typically tells us to stay away from the women of the other nations. It's not because it's a problem having one, especially as a concubine. But the issue is that those women are will have you follow after their gods because of the love and, you know, stumbling over their beauty or amazing sex or whatever it could be, you know. Uh, verse three, it says, and this is the point. And he and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Okay, and so his wives also with his uh, concubines as well, because he has seven hundred wives and three hundred concubines. Okay, um, so he had, overall he had a thousand women. King Solomon had a thousand women, man. All right. So how much? And he was a, a king in the flesh, even though that's Yahweh Shai. Okay, how much more when we're in the kingdom and we have new bodies? Okay. So, um, 
I kind of want to jump around a little bit, but in order to stay on track to see how I should do this appropriately. So now, before I tell the brothers division, and I, you know, I'm trying to say this without uh, making brothers impatient, uh, you know, because I know how it is watching videos. But let me just, I want to say this part and then I'm going to go into the vision. All right. So I, I'll say that, you know, every brother has had their trial with uh, women. And, I, you know, I guess it even for women goes as well with men. But, you know, a woman is supposed to be with one man for the duration of her life. Okay. But in Babylon, they, they think that it's all right for our women to be harlots. All right. And that was a curse upon our women, according to Amos 7 and 17. And, our, and us as well. But, all right. Um, so, a lot of my life, me and women have not necessarily worked out because, um, you know, I had my ways in the world. The things I did all, that were wrong or off, you know. But since I've been in the truth, I've had my fair share of women as well. And majority of their minds are completely focused on Babylon and things like getting married, you know, in a formal way. Or uh, well, in a Babylonian way, you know, man bending down on knee, going into church, um, you know, big wedding and white dress and gown and bridesmaids, all of that kind of stuff, which is not mentioned in the Bible, by the way. All right. And it says, um, and also um, celebrating holidays. A lot of women, you know, can't get with the thought of not celebrating holidays and celebrating their birthdays and things like that. You know, granted, I do have my flaws as a man who walks in the flesh, so I'm not saying I'm perfect. And I know I have my part to play in uh, my relationships and their downfall. All right. But a lot of the women, they're, they're flawed in the minds. And that's why Job 39 and 17 says he has not departed unto woman wisdom. OK. All right. But um, I've truly, 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 even though I have my ways in this flesh, I've addicted myself to this ministry. OK, as it says in the book of Acts, I've addicted myself to this ministry and I've always told any women that I deal with, you know, I love you and I treat you with the utmost respect. But my Lord, my savior and this work comes first. All right. And, you know, typically they understand that. But however, after the long run, it, it truly becomes an issue. OK. So, um, you know, the scriptures say those that have wives be as though they had none. All right. Uh, I believe that's like second Chronicles seven and 39 or something. Second Corinthians. I keep saying Chronicles second Corinthians seven and 39 or seven and 36 could be first Corinthians. I always get them confused. Um, but you know, and that's because when we're doing this work, man, you know, we, we forsake our lives. We forsake our lives to do this work, to come back to the Lord. All right. So just because you have a wife, it's, it could be like you don't even have one. OK, but nonetheless, it says, you know, uh, give your wife her due benevolence and things of that nature. All right. So uh, I'm going to just be honest with you, brothers. You know, I sometimes I reach a low point over women that I've loved, you know, and lost, loved and lost. And of course, there's one more than others. And I'm sure a lot of brothers also have a. A similar situation, a similar uh, outcome, all right, when dealing with women. You know, a lot of brothers are blessed where they have women that take care of them, women that look after them, you know, and things like that. But, you know, I've had certain women that do things like that, but I also have had some demons. I've also had people that just don't care or they care about another lifestyle more than they care about the one that they had with me. And that's just the way that the Lord had it played out. And that's okay. All right. But. I say this because the night I had the vision, which was a few nights ago, I got pretty low in the spirit, you know, because dealing with Babylon can be vexing and every brother have his trials. You know, and these are not my only ones, but this is, you know, one, obviously, because the Lord said he gave a woman to be a helpmate. All right, man should not be alone. But in, in captivity, man, it's hard dealing with these women. All right. But um, so I was pretty low. And uh, so the Lord, he's all of the wives that I thought I had. He took all of my wives away in one way or another. And I have not also I've not been blessed to have children on this side. All right. So and I don't mean that like I'm. Um, I forget a sterile or anything like that. It's just, you know, situations have happened, all kinds of shit that happened as far as me having children. 
you know, but you know, I'm just like, well, once again, I'm sure other brothers have had similar situations. So on that night in particular, I woke up at about 3 a.m. I went to sleep early that night, but I woke up at like 3 a.m. and I couldn't fall asleep again. Uh, so this is how I know it was like a separation from a vision from a dream because after the vision was over, I woke up at like, well, I was awake at like five, but I know I didn't completely fall asleep. Okay. Um, but so when I dozed back and then when I like aw I woke back up at five, but I had the vision and the Lord, all of the things that he's done, like, you know, I feel like my, my women have been taken away and stuff like that. I always think of Matthew 19 and 29 and 30, you know, that talks about how he's going to repay us a hundredfold for the things that we have lost. Okay. But the Lord did give me comfort in his vision. Um, because of course I saw things, man. I saw things happen. And so he gave me a lot of comfort in it. But it didn't start off pretty. <laughs> All right. It didn't start off pretty. And so I, I got other precepts, but I'm trying to organize them properly in my mind. So, let, all right, let me talk about the vision a little bit. Maybe some of my scriptures might unfold while I speak. And I know I've been talking for a minute, brothers, but just bear with me, Baba Kusha. All right. So. On that night, if I can recall correctly, so when I fell asleep, you know, or I had my vision, you know, and I, my, I was in a daze or whatever, a trance, and it started off, I was like, it seemed like it was dark, but it was like some lights around. I was in a dark neighborhood, and next thing you know, I was running into who, who these people believed, I believe were my enemies. You know, they had guns and weapons and things like that. And they seemed like a threat to me. And I was alone at the time, you know, but I, it was like it was basically Jacob's trouble. You know, it was Jacob's trouble. And I'm, I'm trying to find my way through. And next thing you know, I'm getting into like random fights with people. I'm getting it and I'm running. I kept seeing myself running. And then I got into this real big altercation with something with this group of guys. And and I know it was all through the spirit of the Lord. Call all your help by Shemel Shah. I was able to like fight these men. I was able to take their guns. I was shooting them with their guns. You know, and it, I was like doing some, I was doing things that I've never done before that I know in my flesh I was not capable to do unless it was through the Spirit of the Lord. I was, you know, it was like some movie shit. You know, I'm, I'm like fighting people and I'm, I'm taking their weapons, I'm using them against them. You know, and all that kind of stuff. But I can't remember like running and I'm going to, like different stores and things like that. And I'm running and I just can't remember. I kept thinking like, man, like, Lord, like, please look out and protect me. Like, is this ever going to look up, man? I'm, I'm I'm out here by myself. I'm struggling. You know, I'm just praying to the Lord to have mercy on me and keep me fighting. Give me the energy to continue on. That's why, like, how was I said in John, the 17th chapter? You know, I pray that you take them out, not out of the world, but the strength to, you know, basically roughly paraphrasing to endure through all the things that are in the world, you know? And so after that, I ended up finding this one little place, um, you know, it was kind of beat up and all this kind of stuff. And I ran into this one woman, you know, she was a Jake. I ran into her and, you know, she told me, she saw me, you know, like fighting other guys. And it wasn't all, when it came to the, the, the women, I wasn't talking a lot. It wasn't a lot of talking going on, but a couple things were said here and there. But you could tell in the gist of the the, the uh, vision what types of things were taking place, if you can understand me. So she was basically saying she saw me fighting all of those guys, and you know, like she under she she basically. She was feeling me, you know what I mean? She's like, well, you know, like, how are you able to do all that kind of stuff? And I'm basically like, you know, the Lord, you know, you how about Shemi, I was shy. And she's like, you know, and I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm telling her a couple things in there, but basically she ended up asking, like, can she, can she be with me? Can she stick with me? You know, and I, I instantly thought of that movie Bushwick, you know, because that woman in the movie Bushwick, if you haven't seen that, that's a movie about martial law. And that movie Bushwick came to mind. And so in Bushwick, uh, she was like trying to stay with him and all this kind of stuff. But the difference is he was like just being her friend, you know, but this woman, you know, um, I saw a couple like, uh,
things where I was like, you know, dealing and stuff like that, but nothing too off the off the Richter scales because the vision had to stay intact. So then basically after I'm with her, you know, we're traveling around, we're going to different places. And I know now she's my wife. She's my woman. We have been doing some things. We end up running, like we we running around, we're getting supplies, things like that. Um and uh, you know, trying to find food and whatnot. And next thing you know, we run into like I can't remember exactly, but it was like two or three other women. And these women like ask like, you know, like what has he been doing for me? And she like just starts telling them of my exploits. You know, I don't even have to talk for myself at this point. She's telling them about my exploits and the things that I've done and the people that I fought against and you know, the like the powers that the Lord had given me. And these women, they begin to ask her, can they come too? You know, she's basically like, y'all got to ask him. And so these women end up becoming mine too. And so at that point, I, I have like three or four wives. And after this, it seems like my problems started to cease because the Lord truly started to provide on a different level. And so what I did is, um, you know, I, I'm trying to keep the vision, but I, I think I just had a a verse that uh, came to mind. So lock it, bear with me. Let me get this real quick. And so I don't lose track, train of thought. All right, this is Judges 8 and 30. It says, And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. All right, so a Gideon had many wives too. So it's in the Bible. If you read 1 Samuel 1 and 2, it also talks about Samuel having two wives. Men in the Bible have had many wives. So this is not like going off or, you know, something that we're just creating. This is these are used to build empires. These are used to build to build nations when we have uh, a man with multiple wives. OK, and so, I, you know, I got my couple wives and we're going around. And next thing you know, I find like a fortress, you know. I guess if I had to say, it's probably a bunker of one of these people who be bugged out and saving up food. So I get into this fortress. It's like locked down. It's like padlock. It's super fortified, you know, and I, I just feel we feel much more comfortable, you know, and, uh, you know, these women, they're, they're happy. They're rejoicing. They're with me. They're, they're, they're a, and like the scripture said, they were making their own food. I didn't have to provide for them at all. All I had to do was be a protection. I didn't have to make them food. I didn't have to get food for them. I didn't have to find clothes for them. And that's what Isaiah 4 and 1, let me jump back to that. You know, I didn't have to do none of those things that, you know, we have to do or that we do now for our women. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. See that? We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. So we don't even have to do you know now it's like hey what do what do, what do eve do run up our pockets all right take our money anytime they want to eat you know what i'm saying well like what you want they don't know they're indecisive and then they want to eat our food you know so we didn't have to i didn't have to get food for them i didn't have to you know you'd be like oh yeah my woman she wants some new clothes you go and take her shopping she buy a couple things or you buy her a new dress i don't have to do none of that man all right and I know I was dealing with these women. You know, I didn't, I, it didn't show out like scenes of me. And by dealing, I mean sexual intercourse for all those who can't receive that. All right. Because in the scriptures, when you have sex with a woman is when she becomes your wife. And if you read, I believe Genesis the 24 chapter, I could be wrong on a chapter, but it talks about. Um, actually, I'm almost positive that I'm wrong on a chapter. Um, it talks about. Um, uh, Isaac, when he got Rebecca and they went into their tent and when he came out, she was, she was his wife and he said he's loved her. Okay. And so, you know, the scriptures talk about in second Ezra, it says men shall cleave unto their wife and they love their wife more than their father and mother. All right. And so I was, uh, I, I was dealing with these women. I know I was having sex with these women because this also says only let us be called by their name to take away our approach. So I was a woman called by her name. A woman is called by her name through sexual intercourse from being your wife. Okay. And so I know I was having sex with these women. All right. Obviously on an individual basis, but all these women were in love with me. They weren't complaining. 
There was no bickering. There was no fighting. There was no jealousy amongst them. All right. All they were doing was just trying to make sure that I'm happy. You know, and man, it was beautiful, man. And this is just Jacob's trouble. This wasn't even in the kingdom. And I pray this is for all the brothers that that, that this happens to, man. You know, and so then after that, you know, I had my four. That was like four at the time. So that next thing you know, I I stay at the little fortress or whatever, and maybe like two or three of them went out. And the next thing you know, they come back with three more women. So what was spiritual is, I had seven wives, man. <laughs> I had seven wives through the spirit. And so that Isaiah four and one truly came to life. I had seven wives, even though it, it says, um, you know, seven is the number of completion. And that can mean a lot, you know, and the ironic part is they were they ended up telling me that they know about some other women that were their friends who they're looking to find who they believe will be three more wives for me. So all in all, they told me it was going to be 10 of them. But at the time in the vision before it can be completed, I had seven wives, seven women that were all about me, man, that loved me. That were happy, not arguing, not bickering, no fighting, no talk back, no smart mouth, you know, no uh, becoming a, a servant for their sakes. All of that was disannulled. All of that worldly things we know about women was completely different. They had a, a truly humbling spirit on all of them, man. Okay, let me get this Isaiah. Isaiah 13. And verse uh, 12, it says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. All right. So the most precious gold on the earth, the Lord said he's going to make his men into that type of gold. OK. And that's because it's going to be a uh, man of man of understanding is going to be uh, beautiful in that day. It's going to be the most precious thing on the earth because. The Lord says it's going to be a famine of the word. So many people are not going to understand by Isaiah 33 and 6 says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. So spirit, men are going to have spiritual powers. Men are going to understand the times that we're living in. Men are going to know to stay away from the mark of the beast. Men are going to know what's righteousness and what's wickedness. So all of the all of these women, all right, who truly have some idea of understanding are going to come into the, the men of the Lord. All right. And they're going to sup with them and they're going to they're not going to have any problem being wife number seven or wife number 10 or wife number 20. OK. We're not going to have to worry about that. All right. And I, like I said, I, I'm not saying this to make any uh, videos about women or to even get brothers super hyped up about it, because honestly, man, you know, we just so ready for the kingdom. You know, we're ready for the kingdom. But. The Lord says, we're going to eat, we're going to drink, and we're going to rejoice. He did say that. These are a lot of Isaiah scriptures, but let me go ahead and get it. You know, he said that. Then the Lord, and did he not say he's a man of his word? All right. Isaiah 65 and 20. Hold on. Give me one second. Bear with me. 65 and 13. It says, therefore, thus said the Lord power, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You see that? So the Lord says, we're going to we're going to eat. We're going to uh, drink. We're going to rejoice. But these people are going to be hungry, thirsty, and they're going to mourn. That's what the scriptures say, man. And we have to believe in the things that the scriptures say. And so Isaiah 4 and 1 is a part of prophecy. All right. And so uh, now let me get these. Um, 1 Timothy 2. And it's a couple of scriptures that I want to say to get on the women. But I'm not going to make that too long because that's not truly the point of this video. But, you know, hold on. Let me get that in a second. I don't want to get ahead of myself. This is uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 15. Is that what I want? Got to be Second Timothy Slocky. Yeah. 
Timothy. That's probably first Timothy. I'm tripping. Oh, that's why. Okay. I just swore I'm looking at the wrong page. I knew I was tripping. This is first Timothy 2 and 15. It says, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. All right. So in childbearing, a lot of women are going to be delivered. All right. Having men of the Lord's children. OK. So, hey, even in the time of Jacob Shower, brothers could still be having children, man. OK. That could be happening. But the Lord said he's going to deliver you and your household. And so if you got seven women and all of them running around pregnant, you don't think the Lord going to provide for that? And they said she shall be saved in childbearing. So, hey, those women could be very much getting uh, beamed up and uh, part of the elect when they realize the things that are coming. And when they realize the, the men of the Lord and they believe because a lot of women uh, are going to have to they're going to have their faith is going to kick in now that they believed on the things that they seen from the men of the Lord. OK, when they seen you, Esau try to take hold of you and Esau try to ride on you and you still were able to fight against it. OK. And this is how you know a lot of uh, that women are going to be a part of the elect. This is 2 John 1 and 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also they that have known the truth. Okay, so it says to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. So there are women who are part of the elect. And a lot of women that are part of the elect are going to come into that number by being uh, by being wives unto the men of the Lord. OK, that's how a lot of women are going to be delivered, whether or not you receive, believe that or receive that. But, you know, but I do want to say, you know, brothers, with these things that we know, you know, one of the this is one of the scriptures, I'm going to get it. One of the hardest scriptures in, the, uh, you know, the, the Lord says, my commandments are not grievous, which is straight facts. But there's one scripture in here that I know most brothers deal with. Okay. Well, a lot of brothers deal with. I'm not going to say most. This is Proverbs 31 and 3. It says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Okay. So right now, let's be real, brothers. You know, a lot of brothers do things. They give their strength to the woman. She controls your emotions. She'll get you heated. She'll get you mad. She'll get you bothered. She'll get you upset. You know, and I told the brothers before, like, hey, these women, you know, we like how you how about Shemia Asha is our Lord. And we study our Lord to know everything we can about them. We're their lords because they're the weaker vessel. So they study everything about us. So the difference between us and the Lord, we're not trying to manipulate the Lord. We're trying to understand him so we can get close to him. A lot of these women, they do it because they want control over us. They know how to best get you, push your buttons and make your tick tank. Your, uh, your, uh, you know what I'm saying? Make it, uh, I forget the uh, phrase, Salakia. But they know how basically how to get you started and how to get you up and bothered and frustrated and things like that. So that's why the scripture said, give not thy strength unto a woman. You know, and I know I'm guilty of it. And I know a lot of other brothers are guilty of it. But brothers, I'm 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 coming to tell you all that hey, that's all for a time and for a season. And all of that is about to come to a close. As we get closer and closer to the end of this thing and we get closer and closer to Jacob's trouble, these women are gonna get a lot of these women are gonna get left that are not believing. All right, the Micah 7 and 10. It says she that she that is my enemy, my enemy gonna be trodden down like the mire in the streets, and she shall see it. So a lot of brothers who got wicked wicked wives hey they're going to be put out all of these women that did you wrong okay the lord has got a judgment for them okay and now let me go back to this isaiah now since i'm bringing that out you know but it was just so beautiful because man i didn't have to deal with the chaos that women bring i have seven women around me you know <laughs> man and that that's light work compared to the kingdom but it was beautiful you know, yeah, of course, you didn't have seven women like around. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the world, you do stuff and, you know, I mean, you probably dealt with a couple of, you know, two or three here and there, four or five, you know. But the fact that I had seven women around me that were completely comfortable with the fact that I was having sex with the other six. Man, you real talk like, you know, of course, we can beat that. But the mental uh, 
resolve the mental peace that you get that you get from that all right and they were all helping and supporting each other when they had problems when they went to make food you know there was no strain no stress no tension okay this is um i'm gonna jump down to isaiah 32 and 9 it says rise up ye care ye women that are at ease hear my voice ye careless daughters give ear unto my speech all right it's because a lot of our women there the, the two-thirds of the nation of israel they're at ease and even some of the elect right now are at ease some of the elect are going to be saved in the time of jacob's trouble when they that because a lot of our people sadly they need to see things in order to believe it all right so a lot of women are going to convert their ways you know i, I tell brothers you know when we little meditate little things about jacob's trouble you know i i pray that the Lord have mercy on us and defend us against our enemy like Isaiah 59 and 19 when we lift up that standard against them. But I told the brothers, like, it'll be real hard of, you know, one day we was making jokes, but we was kind of serious. I was like, uh, brothers talking about what they want they wives to see in Jacob's trouble. I was like, yeah, I just want to get, like, riddled with bullets. You know, like, where your body moving, like, just getting riddled with bullets. But they all just falling off. And none of them, are, none of them impacted me. And, and the wives just watching Hey, can you imagine the excitement <laughs> and how wet the panties is? Let's just keep it 100. <laughs> you know? You think they're going to try to leave a man like that? Absolutely not, man. And that's all through the spirit and power you have by Shemiah and Shai. And that's the, the Lord we serve. All right? Nobody else is going to be able to do those things, man. The Heavenly Father is going to have to endow those things upon his men in order for it to be completed, in order for that thing to be accomplished. Okay? Uh, verse 11 it says oh so like in verse 10 Isaiah 32 and 10 many days and years shall ye be troubled ye careless women for the vintage shall fail the gathering shall not come it says for many days ye shall be troubled so hey who, Jacob's trouble can last longer than you expect and many women are going to be troubled out here alright because they've been careless you know I got on social media recently man I ain't been on that shit in years and I got on and all the women on there are shaking their asses taking selfies every woman got uh makeup on and, and uh fucking eyelashes and wigs and weaves it's all about showmanship and love of self all right nothing's about truth or understanding okay and they're just careless they're living their lives in pleasure man all right and they're dead they're spiritually dead they think they're in tune with the spirit because they 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 light a little sage and they they can read tarot cards man these women are careless, and the Lord is going to destroy a lot of these women, believe it or not. Okay? It says, uh, the vintage shall fail, and the gathering shall not come. You're not going to be able to uh, eat and gather food like you would expect. You know, women love to, hey, what they say, women be shopping, women be shopping. But even for food, you know, a lot of women like going grabbing their food from the grocery store. Hey, you ain't going to be able to do none of that. You ain't going to be able to go and get food and just gather it as you see fit, man. Okay? It says, uh, tremble ye women that are at ease. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. It says, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. So this also goes back into when they were talking about uh, their approach. Okay? These women's level of shame. That's another reason why they're going to uh, try to cling on to the men of the Lord. Because they're going to know that this man is now truly a man of the Lord. All right? And so... They're going to say, take away my reproach. Hey, taking away their reproach is now being with the men of the Lord. So now you're not being in your folly. You're not being wicked. You're not being a harlot anymore. You're sticking with one man. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 3 and 17 goes into the like the uh, 3 and 16 goes into the haughtiness of our women. I'm going to just read that real quick. It says, moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes walking and minting as they go and making a tinkling with their feet all right so that's how they do they walk around they switch they got their uh eyelashes on they got their uh berets they got their nice outfits and their many levels of apparel all right they got their rings on they got their jewelry you know batting their eyes you know, got their tory burke shoes and michael kors purses that's what our women do man so who else is this talking about? All right. 
But they're going to want that reproach to be taken away because it's going to be a great shame that y'all thought that was okay. But you're going to realize that that was all folly and that was all wicked according to the Heavenly Father. Okay? And so there is a great judgment that's going to come because women are going to be taken in this too according to Ezekiel 9 and 4 through 5. Women are going to be taken in this through 6. Women are going to be taken in this destruction. Young women, old women, even babies. Okay? Uh, this is Isaiah 4 and 4. It says, When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Okay, so he's going to destroy by thermonuclear missiles uh, the Israelites who were not following his ways that decided not to hearken unto the words and decided not to cleave unto a man of the Lord. That's why this is so vital and this is so important. Okay, so these women are going to be loving brothers, man. All right, they're going to be all on top of brothers, not, not getting enough of them, man. And then you, you, you can deal with the one you want to. You don't got to sit up and, and, and deal with one that you got that got an attitude. You know, she's going to be like, all right, go ahead. She's not going to argue with you. You got the power. <laughs> all right. This is um, Hebrews 11 and uh, what verse do I want? I'm going to get 16 and then I'm going to think I'm going to jump over Hebrews 13 if I'm not mistaken. It says, but now they desire a better country that as in heaven and heavenly, wherefore the most high is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared for them a city. All right. So, hey, man, you know, this chapter is talking about faith, but hey, the Lord has prepared a city for us. He says the kingdom is already prepared. So we're getting in the mindset of being kings. So the Lord is going is right now we're prepping the mindset to be a ruling class. So a part of that ruling class is having women, okay? And we're going to have that in the time of Jacob's trouble as well, okay? This is Hebrews 13, and uh, where are you? It's lock here. I'll find it in a second. Always when I use this different sword, it kind of throws me off a little bit. Um, uh, Hebrews 13 and 14. For we have no continuing, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. You see that? So the Babylon isn't set it up for us to be true rulers. All right. But we seek the kingdom to come. So the Lord is going to give brothers a glimpse of that by having uh, visions and having real life things happen that are going to be like, oh, hey, man, that's beautiful. You know, hey, the Lord is blessing us with women. The Lord is going to be blessing brothers with food and drink and substance. You know, and like uh, Bishop Atazawam said, he said, hey, man, we might be chilling somewhere, uh, sipping yon yon, listening to Moonchild. <laughs> you know, I, he put me up on Moonchild after that, but it's a groovy, it's groovy, man. You know, relaxing, got your wives around, got your food. You know, you might be like, brothers might be set up like that. But like I said, it wasn't pretty getting to that point. You know, shit was ugly out in the streets and the, the time like never before being scarcely saved out of situations. But nonetheless, the Lord, the Lord is going to make a way for his servants. OK, and we have to believe that. All right. Hey, even Yahweh Shai had a certain love for certain women. Now, if you read uh, John 11 and five, it says, and he loved he loved Martha. All right. He loved Martha and Mary. OK. You know, so there, there are going to be men, that, women that you're going to love. And he didn't love them like he was doing something physical to them. But he had a certain love for them. So there may be even certain women that you have a certain love that's been kind to you. You know, that showed you a certain compassion. That you might say, all right, come on now. You know, come with me now, man. You never know. All right. So, hey, man, you know, I, I know this is uh, probably a little bit lengthier than I expected it to. But as you can see now, this last one, it says, um men stop chasing these women pretty soon these women will be chasing the real men of the lord isaiah 4 and 1 and that's the truth man and i don't know a brother had to make this <laughs> all right i found this on google a brother had to make this but it's the truth stop chasing these women so another point is what i wanted to say is i'm at the point now where you know these women are you know of course i'm a man so 
Of course, I still want women around. But my heart and this mind, and my mind in this world is turning more cold and hardened towards them because I know that the wickedness that they're doing and they're not in their right minds and they're not in their right stage. That's why Paul even said, I, I would rather that, you know, you brothers not even touch a woman because the things that they do now, they just want a lot of times, a lot of them, this doesn't go for all of them. All right? Like I'll say, if the shoe fits, wear it. But, you know, a lot of women now only think about themselves. They only, they don't think about their household. They're not that Proverbs 31 woman. They don't think about their husband. They're committing adultery. You know, they're they're doing things that are totally against the scriptures. All right. But there are women that are good. The Lord is going to have compassion on. And a lot of them are going to be through childbearing. A lot of them are going to be through being with a man of the Lord. All right. So, hey, we've been chasing them and chasing them and chasing them. You know, brothers always say, hey, yo, you know, not brothers, but people in the world say, yo, it's all about the chase. I'm enjoying this. You know, I want a woman who will give me a chase and make it don't easy for me. Man, she got 30, 40 other dudes hitting up her aunt's box. You know, women try to women try to dog you and talk bad about you. Tell them, tell you all the other men that's trying to holler. But she, knowing that you're the one that she really love anyway. But they, they do stuff like that. Women are spiteful. It says no wickedness is like the wickedness of a woman. So when their time coming in there in their right mind and they're helping each other and they're helping the, the, the family in the household. And plus, you know, women don't understand if they want for their jealousy. And they allowed another woman to be around. Times where they get tired. And they, like several instances, one, one of the wives, she tired and don't want to cook. The other wife can be like, I'll cook tonight. No big deal. You go get some rest. Oh, the babies are crying. All right, no, you go ahead. You know, you go ahead. You can rest. You know what I'm saying? You, you go do your thing. I'm going to take care of the children tonight. You know, y'all don't even understand that, that that would be a helping component for y'all. But the, the jealousy, of, the scriptures talk about... Uh, you know, destruction unto a woman that is jealous. All right, you can't be jealous of other women. It's a hard pill to swallow, I know, ladies, but hey, that's the way your how about Shimmy Al Shai got it set up. You can't be jealous of other women. It is what it is, man. All right, he gave y'all to be a helpmate, and this is the way that the Heavenly Father set it up. So, I'm gonna just end it up on Matthew 19 and then I'll wrap it up because I know I extended this way longer than I expected. This is Matthew 19 and 28. It says, And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. And you know, I have confidence in that scripture. I have confidence in that scripture. And may the Lord, I pray the Lord that I'll be one of those men. And I pray for you brothers as well. Hey Amen. We almost come into the time of Isaiah 4 and 1, brothers. Keep your head up. Keep fighting. Keep moving. These visions are going to come to pass. And these prophecies are going to come to life. Just like the Heavenly Father said so. So Lord willing, this is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.